anniversary of the capture and the rescue. Let me just turn this so I can still read it. The capture and the rescue of Remember Baker. My name is Michael Chapman and I will serve as your master of ceremonies for today's commemoration. In the event, this event is part of a series of anniversaries celebrating local histories as we move towards the signature 250th anniversaries of the founding of our nation, our state, and the Battle of Bennington. Anniversaries have always been a cause for reflection, but not always celebration. For Native Americans, for enslaved peoples forced to our shores, for all the marginalized, a 250th anniversary is not necessarily something to celebrate. So rather than thinking of America 250 years ago as an origin story, let us instead consider it an inflection point. An inflection point in the story of a country struggling to become the nation we hope to be and are still becoming. It is our hope that by shining a spotlight on our shared history, we can bring together forth the stories of those underrepresented <clears throat> with whom together we are shaping the America of our future. Today, we focus that spotlight on Arlington, Vermont. I remember Baker, and on the hopes and dreams of settlers making their homes in what was the frontier of 1772. Let us start by recognizing our current leaders of the town of Arlington. If any are in attendance, would you please stand up and be recognized? Here's one. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Now it is my pleasure to introduce Nick Zayas, the town administrator who will speak on behalf of the Arlington Select Board. Nick. It's a pleasure to be here today. Arlington, Arlington's colonial history has, is with us every day. Here in our current and will be with us forever in our future. It embodies the spirit of civic engagement and, and foresight and in, in the planning of a series of institutions that they didn't know the, the, uh, what the outcomes would be of. But through that process, we, we birthed a town and a state and a, and a nation that was worthy of the, the aspirations of these colonial people. The Arlington Select Board meets every every two weeks at the Seal Pine Table, a a uh, a table that that embodies the civic spirit that the, that the colonial settlers gave to us. That we that makes us reflect on every decision that we make, just like the the settlers of the time had to had to reflect on every decision they made. What what would we what they need to do? to make a successful town, to make a successful place that Americans of all stripes can aspire to be a part of. So, it is with events like these that, that we focus our memory on not, not what happened, but the spirit of what happened, of the sense of, in this case, rescuing one of this state's founding fathers, and, and that we need to, to keep that in mind every day as we put the public's interest first and as, as, we, as we reflect on how we can embody the legacy that these people have given us. That is, that is what we do at, and with all of our work, and that is what, what we aspire to do in the future uh, for all time, as, as the select board has always done. That, so, with, with the memory of, of our founding fathers, the greatest of which being Remember Baker, in our hearts, we, we're pleased to be here today and participate in this event, and, and thank all who have been involved in putting it together. So thank you all, and we're pleased to be here.
Thank you, Nick. For our next speaker, I'd like to introduce Bill Budd. He's the Town of Arlington historian and the curator of the Russell Vermontiana Collection at the Martha Canfield Library. Bill, would you please come to the podium? This tends to uh, fade away. I have a very soft voice, so if I don't talk loud enough, let me know. I think it's a really great occasion today that uh, I wasn't going to say anything until I realized this is a real first since the pandemic. And it's really nice to see all the people out here sharing this today. Um, welcome here, here. to Summer Mountain. Okay, I want to begin by expressing my thanks for the uh, committee that invited me to take part commemoration of the 250th anniversary of um, Remember Baker's assault and capture by the New Yorkers. Remember Baker, um, the son of Remember Baker Sr. and Tamar Warner Baker, uh, was born in Woodbury near Roxbury, Connecticut. There's some confusion about the exact date of his birth. Um, he was born in the Woods before Ethan Allen in uh, 1737. He was baptized on June 19, 1737, so the time period of three months before that day. He married Desire Hurlbut in Roxbury, Connecticut in uh, 1760. We know this son Ozzy, well, born about 1761, and her daughter Rima was born. to the New Hampshire grants offered many advantages. Fewer social restrictions than they had in Connecticut, seemingly unlimited resources, natural resources, and the chance to profit from the development and sale of land that they owned. Again, it's probably not a coincidence that on May 16, 1764, the Arlington proprietors, the equivalent of the first select board group, voted to Give 50 acres of land to any man who will set up in a grist mill on Peter's Brook behind us by November 1, 1765. Baker accepted the challenge. Um, it was quite remarkable. He used the joiner skills that he had learned growing up in Connecticut, and within the year he had built the first uh, mill, grist mill, behind us. The mill continued to be used as a working grist mill until the 1920s or so. It was later converted to a retail and residential use, and it's still in, in play here. With completion of the mill, Baker continued to be an active member of the young town, um, serving at one time as town clerk and helping to uh, survey the needed roads and uh, lots that they were dividing up for the new settlers that moved here. It wasn't long before problems, though, began to develop between the governor of New York and the settlers of New Hampshire grants and the governor of New Hampshire. Conflict was over land ownership. 
New Hampshire granted early proprietors outright ownership of land, while New York issued patents to large landowners who then charged tenant farmers rent to use the land. The territorial claims between New Hampshire and New York smoldered until they became unavoidable in about the 1770s, when the Yorkers, as they were called, tried to eject the early Grant settlers. That year, the Yorkers tried to evict James Breckinridge from his Bennington property, but were prevented by doing so by the Vermont militia. The Vermont militia would be later known as the Missouri Public Rights Commission, with a reputation of defending their land rights from all threats. Leaders of the militia included Ethan Allen as the head, and Baker, Seth Warner, and Robert Cochran as local leaders in the area of Arlington. Locally, the conflict over land ownership came to a head on March 21st, 1772, when New York Justice of the Peace John Monroe planned to capture and remember Baker in Arlington. Monroe, who owned land under New York patents in western Shaftesbury in the neighboring New York, had decided to make an example of Baker. It's likely he selected Baker in part because there were fewer Green Mountain boys in Arlington compared to Bennington, and he expected little or no opposition here. The Monroe posse surrounded Baker's home in the pre-dawn hours of March 21st. As Baker slept, the posse broke in through the door with axes and swords drawn. Described by Ethan Allen, they threatened and attacked Baker and his wife and children. Allen gets very descriptive. With weapons of death and spread destruction, cutting with sword and bruising with firearms and clubs. Allen's report of the incident in the Connecticut Current was descriptive and meant to generate support for the New Hampshire settlers, who described the attack as this wicked, inhuman, almost barbarous, infamous, cruel, villainous and thievish act committed by John Monroe. The attack resulted in severe injuries to Baker and his family. His wife was wounded across her head, neck and face. Monroe himself was reported to be responsible for striking Baker's wife with his sword, which was deflected by her elbow and resulted in a lifelong disability. Their 12-year-old son, Ozzie, was also cut on the arm. I have not heard any reports of any harm to the young daughter, Rena. But Baker then fled in the middle of the attack to the second floor, where he managed to break through the wall and jump out. It's hard to imagine today, but notice of the little snowdrifts that remain. He landed waist deep in the snow, where his posse was able to subdue him as he was trapped in the snow up to waist deep. They then bound him, put him on a sleigh, dressed only in his night clothes, or one report says naked, and began the journey to stand trial in Albany. Two neighbors, Arlington neighbors, Caleb Henderson and John Whiston, unsuccessfully tried to rescue Baker. Whiston was actually captured and taken at least partway on the journey to Albany. Henderson escaped and spread the alarm to Arlington and then to Bennington. Two rescue parties set out, one from each town, hoping to intercept the New York posse. The Bennington party caught up with Monroe's posse at Hoosick and rescued Baker, who was weak, unclothed, suffering from severe loss of blood, and missing a thumb. It's remarkable that Baker survived the attack and the winter journey is an amazing event. It was probably because of his strength, his health, his stamina, his experience as a woodsman that he lived to return to his family. Monroe's capture, I remember, Baker was likely meant to intimidate the New Hampshire Grant settlers. Instead, it had the opposite effect. The long-term outcome was to strengthen the Vermonters' resolve to defend their property rights. It was also about this time, 1773, that Baker and the Allens began to invest and develop land in the Burlington area of Vermont. In a deed dated October 23rd, 1773, Remember sold his more than 130 acres of land in Arlington and Sunderland, including the mill and the adjacent buildings, 
to Isaac Frisco. Baker and his family then moved north to ruin his Onion River property in what is now called Colchester. Unfortunately, Baker was killed on August 22, 1775, while on a scouting expedition to Canada, shot by Native Americans while trying to prevent them from stealing his canoe. He was beheaded and his body buried in the banks of the Richelieu River. Over the, over the years, Baker, Warner, and Allen have taken on a mythic stature, much of it deserved, described in glowing terms as leaders of extraordinary like virility, intellectual independence, bold woodsmen, daring explorers, and skillful hunters. The question came up when I was doing this research, what type of person would remember Baker? And there are very few descriptions of Baker, what he looked like in person. One writer described him as a tall, a slim fellow with a sandy complexion, about five foot nine or ten, pretty well set, something freckled in the face. The monument behind us at the mill includes this somewhat romanticized description of, of him. Brave, life-loving, high-spirited, he risked all he had in the service of the monument, giving an example of devotion to the welfare of his community will never be forgotten by the men and women of our region. And I think one of the better descriptions was the 1860 sum up by uh, Reverend Wadley of the St. James Episcopal Church. As an officer and soldier, he was cool and deliberate, yet firm and resolute. As a man, kind and benevolent. As a gentleman, respected and esteemed by all who knew him. I hope this helps fill in some of who remember Baker was and what happened. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much for all the work you've put into that, those words as well as everything you've done since then here. I would like now to invite Vermont Senators Dick Sears and Brian Cash. extend my, my gratitude uh, to everybody involved. A special thanks, though, to Jonas Pivik. For Jonas' efforts, yeah, let's take <laughs> Every project needs a leader, and Jonah has, without a doubt, been an incredible leader on all of these projects. He's really brought history to life for all of us. in time. 
times talking about the importance of civic education, making certain young people understand the history of their state. And it's events like these, the monuments that people can stop at, visit, talk to, reenacting, keep history alive. And I can't thank everybody enough for being involved in it. As some know, I'm a descendant of a lot of goddamn loyalists. But they may be rolling their eyes somewhere right now, but I'll tell you, I am certainly deeply pleased, grateful to be here, and immensely appreciative of everyone's efforts. So thank you. Thank you, Dick and Brian. Allow me to next introduce Vermont legislators Seth Bongartz and Kathleen James. Seth and Kathleen, would you please come forward? Thank you so much for having us all. This is a really great event. Um, 250 years ago today, Remember Baker was attacked, captured, and rescued by a brave group of neighbors from Arlington and Bennington. Baker was an American soldier and a founder of the Green Mountain Boys. He was also the first town clerk of Arlington. Last week, a resolution honoring the events of May 21, 1772, was entered into the official House and Senate calendars, read aloud in your honor on the House floor, and a copy mailed to the town clerk of Arlington. In a way, that simple connection illustrates why it's so important to remember and to commemorate the actions of people who have impacted the course of history in ways both big and small. Thanks, everybody. I thought, you know, when I, we were driving down here, I thought there were going to be eight or nine of us at this thing. It's great to see that there are so many people in this picture. I'm going to give the next uh, speech again. Uh, we apparently think alike. So. Uh, but because of the bravery and patriotism of early Americans like Member Baker and his cousins, we're able to gather today in Arlington, one small village. This is, this is one small village in our kaleidoscope of American democracy. And share a resolution with you. And it's kind of fun, with Baker's town clerk successor. Um, as citizens in a democracy, we have many rights and many responsibilities. One of our greatest responsibilities is to engage in our democracy. And that's what we're doing today. To learn, to understand, to be informed, to participate. History is a continuum. And though it's a cliche, it's true that you can't understand where you've been until you know where, you, where you're going until you know where you've been. History is a rich fabric that connects our past and our present. By remembering Remember Baker today, we acknowledge that fact, and we acknowledge the rights to work together as citizens to preserve our history, to participate in our communities, and to be part of the democracy that was born here centuries ago. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. We greatly appreciate your being here today. We also thank you both, Dick and Brian, along with the rest of the legislative delegation from Bennington County, in having the Vermont Legislature honor Remember Baker with a resolution commemorating this 250th anniversary. Now, I would like to invite Kevin Mullen, Barry Griffin, Tom Hughes, and Phyllis Chapman to read the resolution. Will you please come forward? Current resolution commemorating the 250th anniversary of the New Yorkers' capture and the Bennington Posse's rescue of Arlington Arling Meter and pre version of War Patriot Remember Baker Jr., offered by Representative James of Manchester, Bon Guards of Manchester, Ronwell of Pawnee. Pa 
Bonham, uh, Corbin of Bennington, Jersey of Shaftesbury, Morrissey of Bennington, Nigro of Bennington, uh, Pagella of Bending Dairy, Sullivan of Dorset and Whitman of Bennington, offered by Senators Campion and Sears, Weathers, remember, remember Baker was born in Woodbury, Connecticut, later named Roxbury in 1737 and in 1764 he became one of the second wave of settlers of in the town of Arlington, in New Hampshire, Grand Town, later served as the Arlington Town Clerk and Whereas on July 20, 1764, British authorities declared the land now consisting of the state of Vermont to be under New York's and not New Hampshire's colonial jurisdiction. And whereas some of the New Hampshire Grant towns tried but failed to repurchase the land rights from New York authorities. And remember Baker, his cousins Ira and Ethan Allen and others formed a defensive organization, later known as the Green Mountain Boys, to protect against encroachment by New York authorities. And whereas, remember Baker grew the particular ire of New York authorities for threatening and rejecting New York land grant holders and whereas on March 21st, 1772, a New York appointed justice of the peace, John Monroe, staged a pre-dawn attack on Remember Baker's home, wounding Baker, his wife, and their children. And Monroe's posse then proceeded to bring Baker on a sleigh to face New York justice in Albany. And whereas neighbors Caleb Herring Henderson and John Whiston attempted to stop the sleigh, failed, and Whiston was captured. And learning of these events, a group of Bennington residents headed out to intercept Monroe's entourage. And whereas the Bennington rescuers arrived first at the Hudson River Ferry Crossing, now the site of Troy, New York, reverse course towards Arlington, intercepted Monroe, and rescued the barely alive Baker and this and whereas Baker recovered but was killed in 1775 while on a scouting expedition in Canada. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the General Assembly commemorates the 250th anniversary of the New Yorkers capture and the Bennington Posse's rescue of early Arlington leader and pre-Revolutionary War patriot, remember Baker Jr. And be it further resolved that the state of uh, Vermont uh, Secretary of State be directed to send a copy of this resolution to the Arlington town clerk. Thank you very much, Kevin, Barry, Tom, and Phyllis for sharing the resolution. I think it should be noted that, um, Kevin, you've got a lot of important things. He's got his bling, but very important. The immediate past president of Vermont, and I am the second cousin of Brad Little, who is the descendant of Brad Baker. He is the fifth ranker. So. Thank you very much. Uh, may I? Okay. There. May I please have Brian, Dick, Kathleen, and Seth return with the official copy of the resolution, and would Dan Harvey. Chairman of the Arlington Select Board, join us to receive it on behalf of the town.
Say a few words. I think uh, most everything has been said, so I won't linger. Uh, but it is very important that we remember and the history of the area and the history of our country. Uh, Baker, even just to to pass that on to the next generation is so very very important. I came to Arlington uh, in the early 80s. Unbeknownst to me, I had ancestors that were in the Green Mountain Boys and most likely knew them in the Baker. So this is uh, kind of an honor uh, in, a, in a different way for me, but uh, definitely I, I appreciate the, the chance to uh, represent the select board and the community and I uh, take it very seriously. Thank you very much. Thank you and thank you all so much. One of our goals for this anniversary is to continue to memorialize our local history for future generations. To that end, I would like to ask Izzy Provincial to the podium to announce a new marker honoring Remember Baker. Izzy? case a rolling salute, Fa de joie, which literally means in French fire of joy. This salute will be in honor of Captain Remember Baker and the founders of Arlington and Vermont.
Now, as we allow our living historians to reload for the final salute, I want to thank some of the people who worked to make this ceremony happen. Thank you first and foremost to Kathy Clark and the Federated Church of East Arlington, to the town of Arlington, to Bill Budd, the town historian, and to Nick Zayas, Arlington town administrator. I would also like to thank Kevin Mullen of the Sons of the American Revolution, Thomas Hughes, Barry Griffin and Phyllis Chapman for reading the resolution. And again, Kathleen James, Seth Bongartz, Dick Sears, and Brian Campion for getting the resolution done in the first place. Thanks also to Izzy Prevention, the Vermont Militia 27th Foot, Mike Barberi, Barbieri and Whitcomb's Rangers, David Pitlick and Peter Shapak for our musket salutes. We also want to recognize the Dan Keelan, Joshua Sherman, and all the townspeople of, e of Arlington and East Arlington. And finally, a huge thank you to our Remember Baker 250th Committee, and a special thank you to Jonah Spivak, who has uh, run a really tight ship. Every one of our Zoom meetings, like bing, 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 bing. He's great. I want to finish by inviting all of you to join us again on June 18th at 6 o'clock p.m. right here at the Federated Church across the street for the final event of our 250th anniversary commemoration of Remember Baker. We will present a dramatization of a 1772 Arlington Town Meeting, complete <laughs> with many of the historical figures we learned about today. More musketry demonstrations, and an interactive reenactment of what Arlington's initial response may have been to the capture and the rescue of Remember Baker. We do hope to see you there. And now for the final salute, Izzy, are you ready? For Remember Baker. Well done. With that, we conclude our ceremony. Thank you all for joining us in honor 